Hi guys, thank you for joining me this week for another episode of Crime and Wine. If you're new here, then as usual, my name is Ariana or Ari to the YouTube fam, and I cover true crime cases that have inspired the making of movies. If by the end of today's episode you've enjoyed today's video, then it would mean so much to me if you leave a like and subscribe to my channel and also follow me on Instagram as well. Well, we're actually going to be covering a bit of a different style of case today because this specific case has not been made into or has not inspired the making of a movie. Um, I actually came across a snippet of this case and I just went deep into researching everything that I could about this specific case. But before I get into it, I do want to have a very big disclaimer as some of the details of this case are extremely gruesome and unsettling and upsetting all the way around. So while I do my best to respect the victims of the cases that I cover, this is just one of those cases that just heavily needs a disclaimer. So with that being said, grab your wine or your drink of choice because we're going to need it to get through this case. <gasps> We're starting with a woman named Tanya Bird. Tanya Bird was a 45-year-old woman who lived in the Bronx, New York, and she was known as a hardworking mother who worked as a home health care aide, um, and she also had three children, Portia Lovett, Bashid McLean, and her youngest six-year-old son, who also has Down syndrome. Tanya was described as an extremely upbeat and generous woman, with her friend Elizabeth Cruz stating, quote, anything you would have needed, she would have given it to you. And her sister, Cassandra McLean, would say, I want people to know my sister was a good mother. She always took care of her children. In the early morning around 4.30 a.m. in February of 2013, a man who was out walking his dog near East 156th Street and Eagle Avenue found a bag in which his dog was attracted to the scent coming from that bag leading to the man opening it and to his absolute horror he found human remains and immediately called 911. when officers arrived with cadaver dogs they found body parts inside heavy duty plastic garbage bags and inside a duffel bag among the piles of trash police said the remains were found in at least four different locations the dog found in the first bag was a woman's bloodied leg inside right leg to be exact. The police then found the three other bags and their contents, including the victim's head, part of her torso, and other limbs. Witnesses told police an SUV dropped the bags off Monday night or early Tuesday morning. It's said around this same time, Tanya Bird's son, Bashid McLean, had reported his mother missing. Tanya's son reportedly told police he hadn't been able to contact his mother for at least a day, and Tanya's sister, Cassandra McLean, would say that Bashid McLean told her Bird's former boyfriend dropped by on Monday and that that was the last time he had saw her. Bashid said he, as in the ex-boyfriend, came over yesterday and walked out with her in the morning. Cassandra said that Bird's ex-boyfriend was trouble and that she was quoted saying, I told my sister to stay away from him, but she said he's harmless and not to worry. But others around Tanya would actually paint a different story. According to those who knew the family, Bashir McLean was a very troubled man who had been harboring anger towards his mother for quite some time. His grandfather, James McLean, would say that he often did destructive things such as setting fires and that they had a lot of trouble controlling him. Tanya herself was terrified of her own son. He was on probation after attacking two police officers with a knife back in 2010, and she also suspected that he could have been harming his seven-year-old brother, who, again, had Down syndrome, which that statement alone is just upsetting, and I really pray that that didn't happen. Neighbor Elizabeth Cruz would say that the woman would never have left her youngest son willingly as he had Down syndrome, meaning he was very reliant on her. Based on all this information, the police issued a search warrant for the apartment that Bashid shared with his mother and his younger brother. Let's go back for just a second. Officer Donald Sell was the first on the scene when the man walking his dog had reported to finding a dead body, and Officer Donald testified that he when he opened up the suitcase, which smelt strongly of cleaning products and found Tanya's severed head. Later that morning, Officer Sell was one of the 
officers to respond to Bashid's missing person report as well. And upon entering the apartment, Officer Sell immediately noticed that it smelled exactly the same as that ominous suitcase. He asked Bashid to provide a photograph of his mother and he turned his mobile phone away from him as he searched for a photograph of Tanya. The coroner's office would quickly identify the head as being Tanya Bird and also said that she was quite possibly killed by being stabbed in the neck. Because of this information as well, the police issued that same search warrant for the apartment. Inside, the police would find that the apartment had been scrubbed clean with a ton of bleach and that the shower curtain was missing from the bathroom as well. They also found a saw, latex gloves, and a shopping cart which was believed to transport Tanya's dismembered remains to various locations. But the main piece of evidence that would end up convicting the killer would actually be a photo showing her own son, and yes, her own son, Bashid McLean, holding the decapitated head of his own mother, Tanya Bird. And if that's not bad, he was also smiling in that photo. Following the discovery of this evidence, Bashin was arrested and further investigation followed along with the trial. He did admit to murdering his own mother, and not only that, in a video of an interview between police and Bashid, you could hear him calmly describing dismembering his mother's body before stating, quote, If you can kill somebody, you should be able to cut them up too. If you can't do that, if you don't have the stomach to do that, to cut them up, then you're a coward. I really can't begin to comprehend the mindset of someone who can do something like that and this is just such a disturbing case and just true crime is one of those genres that can be very educational and bring awareness to a number of things as well but it can also be very disturbing and upsetting um, but to just try to understand the minds behind these people who do just awful things. It's an interesting aspect of true crime, but oftentimes there's just really no good explanation for why these people do such horrible things. And just to really get a bit of insight on this man's mind at the time of McLean's arrest, his Twitter handle was at KillTanyaBird and his MySpace page was called Kill the B Tanya. During the trial of this case, he did have a defense attorney, Lynn Calvaca, that would say that her client was legally insane at the time of the murder and during the opening statement she held up that same photograph of that selfie that Mashid had taken with his mother's decapitated head and said quote does this look like someone who knows what he is doing is wrong she said that Bashid had been hearing voices since he was just 10 years old and had been moved through psychiatric hospitals throughout his life. The prosecution, however, would refute this and refer to Bashid as cold-blooded. Assistant District Attorney Aaron Kaplan stated that Bashid had stabbed Tanya in the back after she told him that he was a lousy father. He then went to a local hardware store, purchased a two-foot power saw, and then dismembered his mother's body. Bashid and Tanya's family supported the prosecution with Tanya's sister, saying, quote, If he could do that to his own mother, imagine what he could do to a stranger. I don't hate him, I pity him. Not only did Bashid do this to his own mother, but he also recruited another man to help him in the dismemberment and disposal of the body. Law enforcement sources previously said that McLean insisted his friend, William Harris, killed Bird. McLean reportedly told police that Harris threatened his life and the life of his younger brother if McLean didn't help him dispose of the body. Harris reportedly told police that McLean showed him cell phone photos of Bird's dead body on the way to school Monday morning and asked him for help in disposing of the body. His friend, William Harris, who was 26 at the time, allegedly helped him get rid of the body and the pair were reportedly caught on surveillance video at a nearby hardware store where they bought a power saw with cash. A blade and a box were also found in the apartment of McLean shared with his mother while the saw was found at Harris's home. Cassandra McLean labeled the 23-year-old a monster who had been plotting his mother's murder. My nephew is a monster, she told the Daily News. This murder was premeditated. She said that he deserves the death penalty and he took away one of God's angels and for that he deserves to go to hell. McLean's sister, Porsche Lavette, said he wasn't remotely sorry for what he'd done. He looked me in the eyes and told me he did nothing wrong when he killed her. 
As for the motive behind his acts, it seems like it could have been a number of things, such as some family members would say that McLean was extremely jealous of the attention that his mother lavished on his younger brother. Um, it could have also been after an argument in which his mother told him that he had to grow up and move out of her apartment. And another possible motive could have been that his aunt said her nephew harbored resentment towards his mother after he was placed in a foster home while she battled a drug problem. He then came back to live with her when he was just 18. Whatever the motive though, nothing in this world could ever justify him doing something like that to his own mother. I mean, this is just so absurd. McLean's behavior during the trial was just as crazy. He appeared in court for his arraignment wearing a garbage bag, and according to his defense attorney, it's because he had been urinating constantly on himself and had no other clothing. He said that his client was off his medication, however, we don't know till this day what medication he was even on or for what. He also said he was going to be undergoing a psychiatric evaluation. Bashid McLean would be found guilty of the murder of his mother, Tanya Bird, and he was convicted of second degree murder and unlawful dissection of a human being. He was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. Harris ultimately pled to one count of hindering prosecution in the case and was sentenced to two to four years in 2014 and was released in 2016. McLean Smith said she had been placed in charge of Bird's 10-year-old son since her death and although she had not been expecting this responsibility, she said she would not let him forget about his mother, who she described as her best friend. She said, quote, I will keep her memory alive in his mind and in his heart for as long as I live. She said Bashid's 75-year-old grandfather, James McLean, who spoke as well, said that he would forgive Bashid for what he did, but he would never be able to forget it. He was quoted saying, I love you. I was the one to teach you how to walk, but you broke my heart. Bashid's sister, Porsche Levette, said she was not ready to forgive her brother yet, and nothing that she felt no relief about the case coming to an end and had lost the one person in her life who truly believed in her. She said, quote, I pray one day I will have the strength to forgive you, but one thing is for sure, I will never trust another soul again. And one of the last things Bashid said in court before his sentencing was that he was sorry and that he is constantly thinking about what he did and has an extremely hard time falling asleep. He's quoted saying, what I did to my mother was uncalled for. If you guys thought this case ends here, well, unfortunately, it doesn't exactly. For starters, while Bashid McLean was serving his time at Rikers Island Prison in 2016, he viciously attacked a Department of Correction officer at the jail's most notorious facility. He assaulted the correctional officer Matthew Hines with a scalpel and he would end up suffering an eye wound that required several staples and he also ended up breaking his nose in the attack. And unfortunately, there's a big horrendous twist to this entire case, something just so unbelievable and yes another very big disclaimer for this next part and trigger warning of child abuse. Bashid McLean was married to a woman named Vera McLean or aka Zara Coombs whom he met in a group home and he ended up having a son with her which they named Zamer. At the time that Bashid killed his mother, his son, his son was just three months old in 2013, and Zara moved on and had two more children, totaling out to four kids that she had, which three of them, including the son she shared with Bashid McLean, lived with her and her new boyfriend in a basement apartment. Tragically, in January of 2017, 26-year-old Zara Coombs brutally murdered her four-year-old son, Zamer, by beating him to death with a broomstick. And it was allegedly over him dropping an egg on the floor. Cassandra McLean Smith, the aunt of Bashid McLean, is quoted as saying, Isn't this crazy? A child killed his mother and then a mother kills her child? Ridiculous. What are we coming to? Zara Coombs has been charged with murder and manslaughter, acting in a manner injurious to a child and criminal possession of a weapon. 
Well guys, this case was definitely a tough one to learn about and to say this was an unfortunate and sad case is a complete understatement and all we can really do is pray for each person in the family related to this case um, that ultimately they have or will find some peace and some closure. So leave your thoughts down below about this case if you have any and I'll see you guys back here for another episode of Crime and Wine next week.